So, boxing's 154-pound division. The super welterweight, the junior middleweight, whatever you want to call it, is probably one of the most competitive, deepest divisions in the sport of boxing today. Welcome to the Pugilist Critic, where we talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly in the sport of boxing. Now, right off the bat, I'm going to go ahead and critique Julian Williams. I'm going to give my critic review on his performance and also Jason Rosario. Overall, I gave Julian Williams, he gets a five for me. Really, this was a guy that he was supposed to really go out there and beat. You know, um, this was supposed to be a showcase fight, you know, homecoming fight for him. And he went out there and dropped the ball big time in Philly. You know, he went out there and dropped the ball big time. Jason Rosario, he gets a nine for me. Why? Because nobody expected him to do what he did. Nobody expected this kid, this 24-year-old kid, to come out there and beat the champion who had a lot, who had a lot of momentum from dethroning the juggernaut, Jared Hurd. And now it's up in the air as to who's truly the best guy at 154. We really just don't know who's the best guy at 154. I mean, one may say it could possibly be Jason Rosario. So if, if, if Williams was to go out and exercise his rematch clause, and Williams is, um, I keep calling him Rosario Williams. If Rosario is go out there and beat him again, then, ooh, where it was Julian Williams go from here? You know, this is similar to the situation where he had with Jared Hurd. You know, Jared Hurd, you know, nobody expected Williams to win, and Williams came out there and did the impossible. Stopped the juggernaut Jared Hurd. Jared Hurd didn't want to rematch. He wanted to try to rebuild and go back to the drawing board. Well, Williams decided to do the same thing because let's just be honest. If he goes out there and loses again to Jason Rosario, the banana Rosario, then it's going to look like, uh, what's next for Julian Williams? You know? So he got a lot of thinking to do. He got a lot of rebuilding. He got a lot. He just got a lot of thinking to do. You know, he got to make the right move because Jason Rosario, he's a young guy. He's only 24. So he can only get better. You know, he's big. He's strong. He could punch. He can only get better. Now, a guy like Rosario, who may not have had all the resources, may not have had all the money to have these extravagant camps. Um, they did say he was training for this camp. Uh, he's training for this fight for like 15 weeks or something like that. But he may not. He may now be able to have the resources. He probably was a part time fighter, you know. And it just came out and did the impossible. But it's just one of those things where you just never know. Uh, Eddie Slandy, Laura could step in next against Rosario and then beat him. And then Laura go out and fight Brian Castano and then may lose or fight to a draw again, you know, or something like that. So really, it's just open season at 154. You know, I can't really pinpoint on who's really the best guy. One may say it's Jamel Charlo if you want the Charlo fans. But no, based off the Tony Harrison fight, um, really – he had a Danny Garcia situation to where it was almost like a no look left hook, but he was looking, you know, I mean, he was losing that fight. Tony Harrison was in total control, but he got too careless and got caught. So it was not, I can't really say that he's the clear cut best guy at 154. Plus he never fought the Williamses, the, the hers, the Lars. He hasn't fought all those guys fought each other, but you know, it seemed like Charlo, he's on the um, other side doing his own little thing, fighting these other guys like the Lubins and the, the Tony Harrison's and the guys like that. But it's really hard to say if Jason Rosario is going to be the best guy. I mean, he lost to Nathaniel Gallimore in the sixth round, you know, um, and he fought to a draw in another fight. So, I mean, Nathaniel Gallimore is a guy who it's really hard to say. You know, I guess whoever shows up on their best night, you know, will likely win the fight. The good thing about this is it's good for boxing. You know, this is a very competitive division. Everybody's fighting everybody. It's really, you just really don't know who's the best guy. The bad thing about it is we can't keep a guy with these belts. You know, we don't know who's the real guy of the division. You know, we don't know who's the man. What happens when you over marinating fights? We should have been had the herd and Charlo fight a while ago. This is what happens when you marinate fights. Shit like Tony Harrison happens. Shit like Andy Ruiz happens. Shit like the banana happens. And the ugly thing about it is, <laughs> there's really nothing ugly to say about it. You know, this is this is what boxing is all about. The, the top guys fighting all the top guys. Everybody's fighting everybody. If you want some good boxing, look no further than the bantamweight divisions or the super um, the super welterweight division, aka the junior middleweight division. Those are the divisions where all the guys are fighting each other. Ain't nobody's like 
over above the rest as far as you know running things politically talking about paydays and businessmen and all that everybody's fighting everybody you really just don't know who's the best guy if you told me to squeeze my arm right now and told me pick the guy who's the best at 154 i really couldn't tell you i want i may want to say it's laura but then he lost the herd i may want to say it's her but then he lost the williams i may want to say it's williams but then he lost the um rosario i may want to say it's charlotte but then he lost the harrison i may want to you know what i'm saying so it's like who's 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 really the best at 154? Tell me what you guys think. Who do you think is the best at 154 pounds? Like, subscribe, holler at your boy. Peace out.